field. Okay, so um, yesterday we went through the review. Um, hopefully you got uh, the opportunity to at least try to get number five or six or seven done. Um, you might have you got might have gotten most of the way through those. Um, know that the test tomorrow. <sighs> I still haven't made it yet, so I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. Um, I I I believe it's going to look something like this, where you actually have to fill it out, um, yeah. fill it out, and write stuff down. Um, I don't know how I'm going to give that to the people at home, but uh, I'll I'll figure it out some way or another. Um, well, for the test tomorrow, uh, we'll see. We'll see how I get it together. Uh, huh? What can we not use? Uh, probably not the notes. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but see, the, the problem is, if if I let you use your notes, then I got to make the questions like very different. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Flowchart for sure. Yeah. 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 Flowchart for sure. I thought you meant like use this oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah for sure you can use your notes yeah uh the flowchart thing for sure uh like using this to help you out on the test probably not um so let's go ahead just to make sure everybody's got it uh let's go ahead and look at the questions that we went over yesterday because we didn't really do the answers um so i just want to make sure everybody has the correct answers these are pretty easy and we did do the answers for these um, so A, I believe, was what? Uh, 2 over 13. B was 13 over 8. Um, and then C was 13 over 10, right? Does everybody have that? 2 over 13, 13 over 8, uh, 13 over 10. Now, uh, the second one we set up, um, what was the, the answer y'all got for the second one? It was what? 8.25. And everybody got 8.25? Yes. Yeah, so it was what? Like uh 5.5 times 3 divided by 2, right? Yeah, yeah. So 8.25 on, on number 1 for the final, or number 2 for the final answer. Uh, number 3 for the final answer, what'd y'all get? 41.97. Did everybody get something close to that? Um, so listen, I, uh, I'm, I'm letting y'all trust each other. Don't take this as me trusting that you got the answer right. So if anybody's like, I didn't get that answer, let me know and I'll check it. Um, you might be right, and maybe the rest of the class is wrong. Uh, just because they all got it right, or just because they all got the same number doesn't mean they're right. Um, but if nobody has anything that's like, ah, that's wrong. Uh, so what do you have? You had 0.563 divided, uh, and then what? 2 over 2, right? Yeah, 2 over 2, so it's still 0.563, and then you divide by 74.55. No. You multiply by 74.55. And what was your answer? 41.97. 41. Okay, that seems fine. Because like about half of 75 is going to be like almost 40. Uh, so a little bit over half, I can be over 40. That, that sounds reasonable. Uh, the fourth one, the grams to grams problem. Uh, what, what was our answer there that y'all got? 5.94. What? 5.94? 9.16. Everybody got 9.16. So if you got the 5.94, maybe double check that. So what we had was um, we start with our 7.1. Then we divide by that molar mass, 61.98. Then we had our mole ratio of, what is it, 2 over 1? Yeah, 2 over 1 for the mole ratio. And then we multiply by 40 at the end. Um, and so, uh, if you got off on your math, let me know and I'll come see what you, what you did wrong, uh, and help you get to that correct answer. Okay. Now number five and six, let's go ahead and do those and, and we'll see what we got. So, um, I'm going to ask y'all for this stuff, uh, because ideally y'all got to at least five and six, hopefully somebody got to seven. Um, so what's our starting number that they're giving me for number five? 30.8 and what unit it's in grams and this is my chemical a right s8 sulfur is my chemical a is everybody good with that um so what are they asking me for mass of iron so mass is my second thing i want to get to and fe is my chemical b so now what's the first thing i always want to put down here my starting number yeah so i want to start with my 30 0.8 grams of sulfur, S8. 
Um, I'm going to put that over one. And then I'm going from grams to grams, right? So this is a mass to mass. So I have three conversion factors I need to do. Uh, so looking at that flow chart, going from mass of uh, substance A to mass of substance B, what's the first thing I cross? What do I need to put here? The, the molar mass. So I need to divide by the molar mass of chemical A. Uh, what goes in the middle here? Mole ratio in the middle. Ratio. Uh, and then in the last one, what I need to do? Multiply by the molar mass of B. Um, so that's my setup. Now I just need to put my numbers in and, and see where it leads me. So what is the molar mass for this chemical? Yes. So if you look up sulfur on the periodic table, it's like what? 30 something or 50 something. What is it? It's like 32. Yeah, 32.06. So you need to multiply that by eight because the formula is S8. I have eight sulfurs like grouped together. So the mass needs to be how much eight of those weigh? So what was it? 256.48. Nice. And that is grams of S8. And that's going to be under one mole of S8. Um, so that's dividing by my molar mass. I put it on bottom because I'm dividing. Um, now I need my mole ratio. Uh, what's my numbers and my mole ratio going to be? It's going to be what? 8 over 1. 8 over 1 is the correct one. Um, so let's, let's show you why. My mole ratio has to be moles over moles, right? Moles over moles. So you're just looking at the wrong problem. Yeah. All right. Good, good, good. Uh, so moles over moles. What's my chemical A? It's S8. And A has got to go on the bottom because remember the mole ratio has to be B over A. So S8 has to go on the bottom here. What's my chemical B? It's this Fe. And my coefficients in front of those are 8 in front of the iron and 1 in front of the S8. So that mole ratio is 8 over 1. And then lastly, I need my molar mass for iron. Uh, the formula is just one, mole one molecule or atom of iron. Uh, so what's the weight of iron from the periodic table? 55.845. Yes, 55.845 grams of Fe over one mole of Fe. Yes, yes, shame, shame. All right, uh, so now we have... Divided by our molar mass, we've set up our mole ratio, multiplied by our molar mass. Um, all we have to do is the math, um, multiply everything across the top, multiply everything across the bottom, and then divide top number over bottom number. Um, and what's the answer y'all got? 53.65. Uh, that, I'm willing to trust that, but let's, let me, let me just double check it. So, no, no, I trust you, I trust you, but I just, I don't want to give out the wrong answers. So we got 30.8 divided by 256.48, and then I uh, multiply by 8, and then I uh, multiply by 55.845, and yes, 53.65, something around there. Nice. Um, so that's what we got for that one, 53.65. And what is it? If we check out our units, notice... Um, grams of S8 cancels out with grams of S8. Uh, moles of S8 cancels out with moles of S8. Moles of Fe cancels out with moles of Fe. And the only unit I have left is grams of Fe. That's what I'm finishing in. So uh, let's do number six. Um, what's my starting number for number six? Yes, it's this moles 1.11 or 111.1 moles of NaClO4. So that's my chemical A. Uh, and they want to know it will produce how many grams of O2. So I'm looking for grams here of O2, which is my chemical B. Is that all right? It's an ugly B. Um, so first thing I want to do, like always, start with the number they give me, right? Um, this one is a little bit shorter because it's only grams or moles to grams. Um, so keep that in mind. We're not doing the full, full problem. Um, so I have 111.1 1 
uh, moles of NaClO4. Um, so if I'm leaving moles and going to grams, what's the first thing I need to do here? My mole ratio. So I'm going to put MR for mole ratio. And then the second thing I need to do here, yes, multiply by my molar mass of chemical V. Uh, so now let's set it up. I need moles over moles. Um, I know my chemical A is NaClO4. NaClO4. My chemical B is O2. O2. Uh, what are my coefficients that go in front of that? Four over two. Now we got the four over two. Yeah, yeah. Now we got four over two. And then uh, multiply by the molar mass for chemical B. Um, they don't give this to you, so you got to look it up from the periodic table. Um, so what molar mass did y'all get for this? 31.998. Wait, that sounds too small. Yeah, it's supposed to be O2, not NaCl. Oh, you're right. So, yes, my bad. I was looking at the wrong chemical. And so, yes, 31.998 is perfect. Uh, we're looking for the molar mass of O2. That was my bad. So, we're multiplying by the molar mass of B. So, two oxygens added together is 31. Point, oops, that should be a three. 998. 998. That's ugly. Let me just. Yeah, you know, if you if you rounded that to 32, you're probably going to get the correct answer. 31.998 uh, grams of O2 per one mole O2. Nice. Uh, so now we have it set up. We'll put this over one just to have something there. Uh, multiply all our top numbers, multiply all the bottom numbers, divide top over bottom, and what do you get? Seven. What is it y'all are saying? 7,109.96. Okay, 7,109.96. Everybody sounds like they got the same thing. Oh. Whoa. Can you round it? Take it from rounding. 7,109.96. Okay. And that is grams of oxygen. And yeah, that's kind of a big number. 7,000 is not huge. And 7,000 grams uh, isn't too crazy. That's like what, seven kilograms, which is what, like maybe five pounds? Uh, is, is it as low as three? Is it three pounds? All right. I thought you knew what you were talking about. I was like, wow, that sounds like a little low. Well, uh, here, let me. Well, I'm not going to do it. But I, well, you could just like, Google it. Uh, I don't know the pounds to kilograms conversion. I probably should. It's probably something I should know as a teacher, pounds to kilograms conversion. But I don't know. Um, so let's go ahead and do number seven for the end here. Um, this is going to be a moles. There's a moles. Moles to grams or grams to moles. It's going to be grams to moles. Uh, let me just. Screenshot this. Come on. Well, I don't know. Go away. Here we go. Take that thing go away at the bottom. I don't think you have to go away. There we go. Uh, print screen. Go back here. Bang. Look at that Jerry's chair. Alright. Okie dokie. Okie okie dokie. Uh, so we got number seven here. Um, what's the number they're giving us? Yes, 2.07 grams. And AgNO3 is our chemical A. Um, and then what are they asking us for? Moles of Cu, which is what element? Copper, copper yeah. Cu is copper. Uh, so we're going from grams to moles. So it's going to be very similar to number six here, except our we're going to do our molar mass first, and we're going to divide by it, and then we're going to do our mole ratio. Um, and so you'll see that uh, when we set this up. So I put my first number in, 2.07 grams of AgNO3 uh, over one, and then... The first thing I need to do, if I'm leaving grams and going two moles of chemical B, what's the first thing I pass here? 
Yes, I need to divide by that molar mass of chemical A, and then I have to do my mole ratio. Um, so, dividing by the molar mass, they give me the molar mass for AgNO3, which is nice. Um, so I just need to divide by it. Am I putting it on top or bottom? Put it on bottom. So I get that 169.88 grams per one mole. And this is both AgNO3. AgNO3. Uh, and then I need my mole ratio with chemical A on bottom. So A, moles of Cu on top, moles of AgNO3 on bottom. And what are my coefficients? One over two. Yes, one over two. One for the Cu, two for the AgNO3. Um, and then when I do my math, what's the answer I get? Point zero zero six. Oh wait. Yeah. Redo that one. It might have just been a rounding thing. But yes, I think it's point zero zero six. Point zero zero six. And to be fair, you should probably have one more number after that. Uh, yeah. Six one, fair enough, fair enough. Point zero zero six one. So let's see, clear this out. I'm gonna double check this. So I got two point zero seven divided by one sixty nine point eight eight, which already gives us a small number. And then oh, divide by two, because the two is on the bottom. And that's yeah, yeah. Two point zero seven divided by one sixty nine point eight eight times two. Uh, yes, but if you put it in the calculator just like that, what it's going to do is it's going to divide this first, and then it's going to multiply by two instead of kind of dividing by the two. And so you did it right. It's just the calculator kind of didn't execute the calculation correctly. Um, so then I divide by two, and yes, I get that point zero zero six. And that's why. So that's why I've been telling everybody if you do. We multiply everything on top and then multiply everything on bottom and then just do one division top over bottom. That would have that would have fixed that. Because you'd have had 2.07 times one times one is just 2.07. And then at the bottom, you would have multiplied these together first and then divided 2.07 over those two. Um, so uh, that's it for, for the review. Real quick, I'd just like to show you. What we have coming up after we take this test, we got more sampling assignments and a quiz. Um, so I just want to show you kind of where we're going for this. So let me scroll down. Uh, what is this all the way at the bottom? Oh, this is the one I cut off. Hold on. That's not what I want. What do I want? Um, stoichiometry test. Bye. Let me see, let me see, let me see. How can I get this quickly? Maybe I can't get that quickly. Maybe I shouldn't open that one up. Uh, I'm going to do this one. Open this up. Um, file. Do they have a recent over here? Protected documents. New. Nope. Open. Recent. Stoichiometry test. Yes. Okay. Uh, Okay, now I still don't want that. Uh, hold on. I want to file, open, reset. There, now it should open. Yes, okay. Uh, and we go down to after page number eight. So check this out. Everybody look at this real quick. Everybody close your Chromebooks. Look at this. Um, this is what we're getting into coming up after we get done with the test. Um, and I don't want you to think about this too much, but I just want to kind of introduce it so everybody has an idea of what's coming up next. Um, this is a problem. What they say is, what is the maximum mass of H2O water that can be produced by combining each reactant? Um, and then they give us the equation. So we're combining uh, ammonium here, or ammonia. Uh, is it ammonium? Ammonia? I don't know. Uh, NH3, which is ammonia. Uh, I'm still not sure about that. But 
You're combining that with oxygen, um, which is what? If I'm combining something with oxygen, what am I doing? Combustion. I'm combustion. I'm burning it. So I'm burning ammonia with oxygen. It's producing nitrous oxide and uh, water, H2O. But the thing is, did they give me a, a starting amount? No. And actually, yes. I guess they did, but... Maybe I didn't write this problem correctly. I probably should have put it in the word problem. Um, what is the maximum amount of H2O that can be produced by combining 69.6 .6 grams of each reactant? Um, so basically what they're telling me is I got 69.6 .6 grams of ammonium and I have 69.6 .6 grams of oxygen. Um, how much water did I make? Um, and this is actually kind of important. So think of it this way. There's two things to think of here. First off, let's come over here because i got to illustrate this. We'll do the bicycle example, right? Um, so look at this. Look at this. I have – trying to think of how I'm going to do this. I have uh, six bike frames. So this is a bike frame, and let's say there's handlebars here. Um, so I have six of these. Let me just – I have terrible drawing skills. My bike frames are getting all weird. And six. Right? So I have six bike frames, and I have six bike tires. And I'm going to put these together to make bikes. So notice, I'm starting with the same amount of my two parts that I, that I have, right? So I got six bike frames and six tires. Um, when I put these together to make bikes, how many bikes can I make? Three. Um, and so note that the the three bikes that I'm making doesn't match up to either one of the numbers of parts that I start off with. Because I start off with six frames and six tires, but I only make three bikes. Now, when I make three bikes, how many tires have I used? All of them. How many frames have I used? Three. Only three of them. Um, and which one was the 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 thing that kind of controlled how many bikes I have tires, the tires because if if I was just going by frames I could build up to six bikes right um, and so if I calculate using the frames I would get six bicycles if I calculate using the tires I only get three bicycles so which number did I actually make three and this is important um because what we're gonna start doing is they're going to start being a little bit less direct and a little bit more ambiguous. So they're like, yeah, you got a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Make me some water. Um, and what you have to do is you have to do both problems. Um, you got to do a problem for ammonium with 69.6 .6 grams. Um, and you got to do a problem with oxygen for 69.6 .6 grams. And what you're going to get here are two different answers. The same way I got two different answers here. I got six bikes and I got three bikes. And you got to know which answer is the correct one. The correct one is always going to be the smallest number. Um, because at that smallest number, I'm running out of that chemical. Um, so at three bicycles, I ran out of tires. My, my work for the day is done. I can't build any more bicycles. I'm done. Now, I could also go back, and we could just see this because it's easy math and our brains can do this easily. But I could also go backwards and do a math problem to show me how many bike frames I have left over. Um, and so that's how actually how we get to these really long problems. Um, so with this one, I would do a grams to grams for oxygen, okay? I would do a grams to grams for ammonium, right? And I get two different answers. One for how much water I can produce with that oxygen, one for how much water I can produce with that ammonium, with the ammonium. Um, the correct answer, circle the correct answer, will be the smallest one. Then the next question would be, okay, so uh, let's just pretend the smallest answer was the oxygen. Like I'd run out of oxygen first. Um, that's my smallest answer. Then the next question is, okay, well, you ran out of oxygen. That's your limiting reagent. Um, I have extra ammonium left over. That's my excess reagent. And so what I'm going to do is I can take the answer from the oxygen uh, equation and plug it into the math from the ammonium equation and work backwards and find out how much of this ammonium I actually use.
Does that make sense? Um, because I didn't use all of it. I used all of the oxygen, but somewhere along the line, before all of this ammonium was done, my reaction stopped because I ran out of oxygen. Um, and so the hardest question to answer is how much ammonium do I have left over when my reaction is done? Um, how much excess did I have? And so that's actually three full problems that you have to do to get all the way back to that. Um, and then finally at the end, uh, the last thing we're going to talk about is uh, percent yield. And basically this is, so if I do this in real life, well, maybe this isn't the best example. Um, if I do this on paper, I get a very specific number, right? Um, but in real life, if you give me six bike frames and six tires, maybe I don't actually make three bikes. Um, maybe one of the tires is flat, or maybe I'm missing some screws, or you know, I took an extra long lunch break, and I didn't actually make three tires today. Um, and so the amount of things I can make on paper are different from the amount of things I actually make in the lab, because on paper, when I stir my chemicals together and I'm trying to create oxygen or water or whatever, um, all the atoms are going to touch and everything's going to combine like it, it perfectly should, right? But in the lab, I could stir forever and I might have an atom of ammonia that never touches that atom of oxygen and never reacts and forms water. Um, they're just always missing each other on different sides of the beaker. They never hook up. Um, so there's always going to be some a little bit of product that I don't make. Um, that's what that percent yield is. You can calculate, um, if everything had gone perfectly, how much would I have made? How much did I actually make in real life in the lab? And what percent, like, like how well did I do? Um, you know, if you only get 50% of the stuff you should have made, that's not very efficient. Um, if you can get up in the 90s, now you're very efficient. You're using all your materials correctly. Um, so we still have some work to do in stoichiometry. Don't think because we're testing that we're just uh, we're getting near the end of it. Uh, it's going to get harder from here. Yeah. So, uh, yes. If you have any questions online, uh, please just send me an email. And uh, I will have instructions for you tomorrow. Thank you. Have a nice day.